Greetings Captains, it's Tealor with Stowbetter. Today, I want to review the upgrade system with you. I'm going to cover the most cost-effective way to upgrade your gear and the overall impact upgrading your gear has on your build. Let's start with some basics. Most pieces of gear on your ship or captain can be upgraded with the upgrade system. You might have to unequip it first, but you should be able to right-click an item and hit upgrade. Next, you slot an upgrade and optionally an upgrade booster. Some upgrades cost a lithium to apply, some do not. There are two ways an item can be upgraded. Mark, which goes from 1 to 15, and then Rarity, which goes from Common up to Epic. At each mark, you'll have a small chance to increase Rarity by upgrading to the next mark, but the Rarity chance resets with every mark upgrade until you're at mark 15. Also, upgrades are twice as effective at upgrading mark on Upgrade Weekend. Before we even talk about the details of upgrades, make sure the gear you want to upgrade is the gear you plan on using long term. Upgrading gear is very cost intensive. Make sure you get the right gear before you upgrade it. We have many guides and builds on our site, stobetter.com, and the best resource to start with is the progression guide linked in the description. Look to see where your gear falls in our outline. So what kind of upgrades are there? I'll divide them into five categories. R&D has four different upgrades per school that you craft as you get higher ranks in each of the R&D schools. They are limited to specific equipment that they can upgrade. These upgrades are basically free to craft, but cost a lithium to apply. These are the weakest of the upgrades, but not without application. Next, you can get some universal upgrades for free from events as well as recruitment campaign characters which take no dilithium to apply the upgrade. These sometimes have the stipulation that they apply 0% chance to upgrade the rarity. These are fairly average upgrades and are often the best to use on epic gear you have that isn't quite Mark 15 yet. If they ever raise the level cap, these will be the best upgrades to upgrade your max level gear with. Omega Tech upgrades are our third category and are available in three types. While these are cheaper to obtain than any other upgrades, what they cost is your time. You can only get these from playing the Omega Stabilization minigame during our, the annual anniversary event in the February time frame. It can take hours to grind enough particle traces, fragments, bits, and pieces to get an Omega upgrade. We'll cover the best applications for these in a moment. The best generalist upgrade is the Phoenix upgrade from Phoenix Boxes. While these boxes cost a lithium to obtain in bulk, you can get a few free ones during Phoenix Box events. If you use these Phoenix boxes just for upgrades, you can expect an average of 18 upgrades for 40,000 lithium. Unless you are sitting on a pile of Omega Particle Fragments, these are the most cost-effective upgrades. The last upgrade type is the Ultimate Tech Upgrade. This comes with Keyring Bundles, which cost Zen, and Red Alert Events. These are instant max upgrades. Rare, Blue, Mission Reward, and Lobby Gear are the best place for these, but I also find sometimes I use them on random gear that I just don't feel like doing the one-off upgrading on. Fekiri Torment Engine, Tachyo Kinetic Converter, and Bioneural Infusion Circuits are the best ones to use these on, although rare low by gear is pretty outdated and easily replaced at this point. So how does upgrading work? An upgrade explicitly states how much technology points, TP, it applies, and then may list a quality multiplier. The easiest way to understand this is that it applies quality points toward a hidden value based on its TP and quality multiplier. Let's take a basic tech upgrade. It applies 2000 TP and has a quality multiplier of 1x, so it also applies 2000 points to the quality requirement. Common rarity items take 2.5 times as much quality points as their TP requirement, so using this upgrade will always set your quality bar to 40%. The quality requirement doubles with each rarity up, so as you increase in rarity, you'll eventually get to where using these only has a 2.5% chance of increasing rarity. Omega quality upgrades apply 1 TP and the equivalent of 2 regular Omega upgrades toward the quality requirement. Because of how these work, you can completely fill the quality chance bar with one of these upgrades at Mark II. There's a small chance when applying any upgrade that you crit and get a 1.5x or 2x multiplier to the upgrade you applied. We don't factor these into the math, you can't really predict when it'll happen. Ground gear and consoles cost one-third the TP of other space gear. This generally means you can upgrade three consoles for the same price as upgrading one space weapon. With some exceptions, non-reputation set items are 10% more expensive 
and reputation items are 20% more TP expensive to upgrade. So how should you go about upgrading your gear? In general, we recommend you upgrade your gear during upgrade weekend. It's fine to upgrade one or two pieces off weekend if you have to, but you'll spend a lot less of your dilithium and therefore your time if you upgrade on upgrade weekend. Past that, upgrade plans go one of three paths. The cheapest way is to start with a Mark II item, either very rare or ultra rare. Don't bother with higher Mark items if you can get it at Mark II. This is because it is far more expensive to roll for rarity upgrades at Mark 15 than it is at Mark II. You'll spend about 25% more on overall TP upgrading an epic item versus a very rare item, but having to roll for rarity at 15 one time eclipses any savings you might have had. Take your Mark II very rare item and apply one Omega quality upgrade. You'll guarantee a rarity upgrade on the first roll. To do that at Mark 15, you'd need many more Omega quality upgrades. Next, apply a basic tech upgrade. This is the minimum upgrade you can apply so that you get the upgrade in rarity without increasing the cost so much as to require two quality upgrades the next time. If you started with very rare, it's time for step two. Now that you have an ultra rare item at a lowish mark, you can apply one more Omega quality upgrade and it should once again guarantee a rarity upgrade. From here, apply any universal upgrades you have to hit mark 15. If you don't have those, use Phoenix upgrades. Omega Mark upgrades and even Omega upgrades cost lower to lithium, but take so long to acquire they should be used sparingly. Every Omega Mark and Omega upgrade is one less Omega quality upgrade you can obtain. If you started with a Mark II ultra rare item, use this same process, just skip the basic tech upgrade. Once you've applied one Omega quality upgrade, you can use any of the universal upgrades or Phoenix upgrades you have on hand. Most gear doesn't come at Mark II, however. Once you get above Mark 10, it would take multiple Omega quality upgrades to guarantee a rarity increase. Phoenix upgrades are the way to go. It simply costs too many Omega upgrades to use them here for upgrading rarity. You'll get the most benefit getting to Mark 15 anyways, so don't stress rolling up for Epic on these items until you have significant resources. To summarize, you either get it at Mark 2 and use the Omega quality upgrade trick, or everything else uses straight Phoenix upgrades. So, what to upgrade? If you're flying a science build, upgrading the deteriorating secondary deflector should be priority one. It's often the highest damage source and it also provides stats that apply to your entire build. Otherwise, you should start mass upgrades with consoles. Consoles are not only cheaper to upgrade, but apply to wide swaths of your build. If you do it right, you can get these to Mark 15 without much expense. Consoles scale just as well with rarity as they do with Mark. You'll spend about the same on three consoles that apply to all of your weapons or exotic powers, as you would on upgrading a single weapon, which applies only to that weapon. Upgrading four locators to Mark 15 is as effective as adding another tactical console to your ship. Next, upgrade your weapons, including any experimental weapons you may be using, to Mark 15. Don't spend anything extra on rarity unless you can get it from Mark 2. Weapons scale really strongly with Mark upgrade, and really poorly with rarity upgrade, especially if you have to factor in re-engineering costs. While not strictly doubling your overall damage, it's like adding four fully upgraded tactical consoles to that weapon. Going from very rare to epic adds somewhere around one-sixth to one-half a tactical console to that weapon, depending on the modifiers. Upgrading your engines should be the first piece of your drivetrain you upgrade, as maneuverability affects both damage and survivability. Upgrading the deflector depends on the build. You only get stat increases for mark and modifiers for increase in rarity. Some of the strongest parts of deflectors don't even scale with rarity, such as the coal crit on a colony deflector. Upgrading your shields is a large boon to shield capacity, but shields can still burn off very quickly. Warp cores are hit or miss, but there are some warp cores that literally gain nothing from upgrades. If you can get ultra rare on cores that come with the amp modifier, that is great, but upgrading mark rarity outside of that does almost nothing. To summarize, upgrade to mark 15, come back later when you are sitting on a pile of dilithium and upgrade to epic. Mark 15 is going to be the highest impact to your overall build capacity. There are a few exceptions to this, but in general, this should get you the best bang for your buck. A few closing thoughts. First, let's talk about upgrade accelerators. You can occasionally use these to fix math, save an upgrade here or there, but in general are hardly worth the expense to pick up. I could see using these best if you are extremely tight on Omega upgrades, but have plenty of resources to get accelerators. Advanced consoles, like isomags, can come at Mark II very rare or ultra rare. 
The expense isn't in the rarity, but the modifier from re-engineering. Since you can get them at Mark II, there is plenty of room to use the Omega Quality Upgrade trick to get them to Epic, regardless of starting rarity. However, if you are rolling your own mods, do yourself a favor and pick up the Ultra Rare. The throwaway mod ones are typically very close in price for very rare and ultra rare. Upgrading a build with around 8 upgradable consoles, 8 Mark 12 very rare weapons, and a full drivetrain to Mark 15 using Phoenix upgrades should cost you on the order of 500,000 dilithium. This amount will vary widely, but just be prepared that it can take a long time to get a build fully upgraded. A single Mark 12 weapon costs around 15,000 dilithium or more to upgrade. If you have a Temporal Agent from the Annual Recruitment, getting 10 Reputations to Tier 5 will greatly reduce your overall cost for upgrading Reputation gear. Some gear is then worth rebuying at the higher mark in rarity that you unlock. Just using Phoenix upgrades could cost 100,000 lithium just to go from very rare to ultra rare. I've mentioned re-engineering several times, but want to stress this is really for the last 1%. For the amount you have to spend to get salvage and dilithium, you aren't getting huge variances in performance, with the exception of advanced consoles. However, advanced consoles have so many mods to roll from, you can easily spend well over 100,000 dilithium on getting one to the right mod, let alone some builds utilizing eight. Even weapons with only a very limited pool of mods will have five modifiers to roll, and could easily cost over 8,000 dilithium, enough to upgrade the weapon from Mark 12 to Mark 14. You'll likely see around 1-2% to difference between the mods it came with and the mods you roll to. Best to leave re-engineering to the very last, and do it only at Epic. Except for that one Ryzean kit frame, you have to roll modifiers on that one before upgrading. It's a lot of information, but hopefully this helps you in your upgrading. We've got a printable over on stobetter.com with all of this information and more. Link is down below in the description. Print off a reference page or have it up on your pad for reminders on the best way to upgrade your gear. We'd love to hear what you are upgrading next upgrade weekend. I'm upgrading my <laughs> deflector. I'm upgrading my torpedoes. I'm upgrading my phaser beams. Let us know in the comments.